So if we go to Psalms 91, and we'll begin at verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with, thy, with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befail thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Amen. Make that, take that word into our hearts and say, God, you know, you promised to take care of me, and I'm trusting you to do what you said you would. You bought me with your blood. You purchased me. You redeemed me back. And you've taken full responsibility as my head, and I'm trusting in that. The, the government is upon his shoulders, so we just trust him to take care. But just, in a, uh, just going a little further from Sunday, I just wanted to also think about, the, I've been thinking about this and meditating on this as well. And I was talking to another brother the other day, and, and we were talking about some of these things. But for us, as the believers, as the bride of Jesus Christ, We've got peace in our hearts. We, we've, we're under the wings of Jehovah. We're covered in feathers. You know, I love that word picture the Bible paints here that he, he shall cover thee, in verse four, with feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. So we've got the truth, we've got the word, we've got the presence of the Lord, and there's such a peace inside and such a joy even in the midst of all kinds of trouble. But the reality is, that's just our portion. Outside the bride, people are afraid. They're very afraid, they're terrified, they're gripped by fear, there's a spirit of fear that's moving about and gripping the hearts of the people. And, and for me, I wanna take note of that and recognize that it's time for us to have compassion. There's gross darkness upon the people and it's time to have compassion and, and not in any ways come across an arrogant as though, you know, just because we're under the wings of Jehovah that we can have an arrogant attitude about that like nobody else should be scared. They very well may should be scared. You see? So, so we don't wanna condemn or criticize somebody in the world who's afraid, but we want to have compassion and a heart of love and say, you know, the reason I feel the way I do is because what God's done for me. Because of the connection that I have with his indwelling presence in my life, there's a peace that, that surrounds me. I know I'm well cared for. I know I'm taken care of. And I'm on a foundation of his word that will not move. And, and, but that's my position. But that's not this man next to me's position. And we're starting to see a drastic uh, difference between the believer and the rest of the world. People, you know, who lived a stable life and had some sort of confidence and all of a sudden the confidence around the world is being shaken, the confidence all around and, and all of a sudden the gap between the believer and the unbeliever is getting wide. And, and so I just want us to be conscious of that because it also creates opportunities. If we can just be humble you know, I told the story of the Moravians on the ship when, when John Wesley was crossing over to America and the storm came and those circumstances. But he also writes in his diary and other places about that trip that the Moravians were a humble people and they were serving the rest of the people all the time. They were taking care of the sick on the ship. They were serving. They were doing menial tasks that nobody else wanted to do and the Moravians gladly did it and they did it with joy. So they weren't just... Uh, you know, singing all the time. They were serving everybody around them. And even the people who were terrified, they with joy were serving them. And so, you know, we're in a special position. And I, I want to recognize that and, and not condemn anybody else, but say, God, if there's any way I can take what's in my heart and put it in their heart, I would gladly do it. 
with everything that's in me, if I could take the joy in my heart, the peace that God's given me, the love for God, if I could take that and put it in the heart of the people you see with a, a face in terror, eyes in fear, I would do it if I could. And I'm just praying, God, give us an opportunity. Amen. Give us an opportunity, but, but let's walk in, in meekness and humility. I also want to say, we know that we're under protection, but also, you know, everybody else is afraid. And so when we walk into a place, if you go into a waiting room for a doctor, or if you go into uh, 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 anywhere like that, they've got the seats, you know, three feet, six feet apart, however long, far apart they are, because that's what they've been recommended to do. That's what they're told to do. Just because we're, not, we're okay doesn't mean we should go push those seats together and sit down. Because as soon as you do that, you, you bring fear into the heart of somebody else. And that's not even kind. You know they're afraid. Don't scare them. Just sit six feet apart, do your thing, and go back. We're not afraid. It's not that we have a problem, but they're afraid. And I don't want to make them more afraid. I don't want to induce panic by my conduct. I went into St. Rita's the other day to visit somebody and they had a sign up and they asked everybody to use hand sanitizer when they come in the door. So I used hand sanitizer when I come in the door. Not because I was afraid of germs, because the sign says, please use hand sanitizer. You know, it's just a common courtesy. And if somebody would see you walk past that and arrogantly say, I don't need that, I'm the bride of Jesus Christ, what would that do in their heart? The fear that would come up and all those things. We've got to be careful, amen, that we don't cause an offense for no reason. So we just want to be conscious of that and have compassion and understand. Capstone love is a different kind of love. It's a love of understanding based off revelation. And we know, amen, that, that God is our refuge, God is our strength, he's our strong tower, his word will work, his promises are true, we're, in the, we're, we're under the blood covenant, we know that we're safe, and we know that there's healing in the cup. But it doesn't mean that that, that revelation can be forced on somebody else. And it doesn't mean that that puts us in a position where we incite panic and fear in somebody else's heart. So we just have to have understanding because capstone, capstone is understanding, knowing the difference. That's gross darkness. Satan's Eden has brought the people, Satan as the shepherd of this world has brought the people into destruction. The pale horse riding in the fourth seal, that anointing breaking out upon the earth is bringing death. But praise God, the true white horse rider is riding in our hearts. Christ, what a contrast, what two different paths we're on. Amen, and we're coming to a time where we're starting to see there's two different paths that we're on. And so we wanna be conscious of that. Also, let's look together at 1 Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three and verse 15. First Peter three and 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. I believe we're gonna have more opportunities to exercise this scripture in the next few weeks or months. And I have a desire to, because if somebody else can receive the hope that I have, as far as I know, the door to the ark isn't shut. And Noah never shut it. And Noah didn't desire to shut it. Noah was standing in the door until God sent him in saying, come, 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 come. And I want to do the same thing, stand in the door and say, come, 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 until God says no more. But as far as we know, that door is still open. And I want somebody to be able to receive what I have. So I want somebody to be able to receive peace. Also, in the assembly, things are changing. We've got a situation over the next few weeks, maybe the next couple months, where people are gonna probably be sent home from work. Some have already been sent home, some may, some with pay, maybe some without pay. And so we wanna watch one another and bind ourselves closer together and be conscious of where your brother's at. And if you can help him, help him. If you, if you know of a need and you can meet a need, meet a need, but let's watch out for each other right now. 
Let's, we're, we're a family and God's put us together to watch for each other and care for one another. And if you know of a need and you know you can't meet that need, talk to one of the deacons and the deacons will make sure they get with whoever needs help. We want to help one another because we're here for each other. We're one family. This is why God's brought us together. Amen. And so we want to watch out for each other. We want to encourage each other in the faith. Now is not the time to stay apart. Call one another, text one another, get together whenever you can and encourage one another in the word. Now's the time to be quoting scriptures and quotes to one another. Amen. Now's the time to be reminding each other of what we're standing on and what we're standing for and, and what God has done in our lives and what he intends to do. And now's the time to really encourage one another. This is the time to get closer, not further apart. This is the time to show greater brotherly love. Than, than before and, and let the love of Christ be expressed among us. And this is also a time to be led by the Spirit of God because everything is, is changing. I could say it that way. Everything's changing. Some things are becoming confusing. Some things are becoming more clear. But it's going to take individual leadership to navigate the changes, to know when to speak and when not to speak when to move and when not to move, when to go and when to stay. There's times that, and we don't know if the things will get more difficult or less difficult. We don't know anything that will happen next. All I know is God's in control. That everything's ticking just right on time. But with that being said, we, we need a greater sensitivity to the Spirit of God and quit using our brains and be led by the inward, inward movement of the Spirit of God and let God tell us when to speak who to speak to, when to be quiet, All right? No more, no more just doing things our own way. Amen, the world used to be predictable. It used to be steady. You used to know what you used to, we used to believe we knew what we were gonna do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We had the week planned out, we had the calendar full, and now God has, God has taken away some of those things to say, hey, you know what? I have no idea what will happen two hours from now. But praise God, I know who does. I know the one who knows what will happen two hours from now, two months from now, two years from now, if there's that much time left in this condition. I know the one who knows. And so I just want to hold his hand because I don't know the next step I'm going to have to take, but he's already got it figured out. He already saw it in his mind before the foundation of the world. And he's purposed that I would be here to act out what he's already seen. And so now's the time, you know, if, if we've watched the way God's been preaching the word to us, it's about cut off the entertainments, stop the foolishness, be more sincere, be more dedicated, be more prayerful. Why? Because God knew this hour was coming. And we didn't know it, but God knew it. And so now's the time to be more prayerful, to be more consecrated, to be more sincere, amen, so that we can hear that still small voice and be led by the Spirit of God because we're moving into those crucial hours. So even just this afternoon, I, I heard word just in the last few hours that they closed all barber shops and hair salons. So Brother Dave and Brother Craig Wood and Brother Jeremy, that's, that's their business, that's their livelihood, and now they closed all the barber shops. And that wasn't in the works from what we understood earlier, but in the last few hours, something else changed. By the time we get out of here, something else can change. By the time we wake up in the morning, something else can change. And I said, God, hide me under your wings. Lead me with thy staff. Let thy rod comfort me. Let me follow the shepherd. Let me just be holding to your hand. Now's the time. Now's the time to be more sincere. Trust God. Don't forget the prayer times that are here, Friday and Saturday, 1 to 5 on Friday and Saturday 5 to 10. I believe they're timely. I believe God called for them on time. And I, I know that it's having an effect on me, and I enjoy the effect that it's having on me, and I pray that God will just bless us all through that time. So more than anything, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. When you see everything changing, there's, there's turmoil everywhere, but inside there's an anticipation and an excitement because God's doing something. Something's happening. Something's moving, and I'm part of the move. I may not know fully. I may not be able to explain all, but I know I'm part of the move. 
Something God's moving through, something God's doing in this hour, and we're part of it, and I've got an anticipation and an enthusiasm in the midst of trouble. And I said, we, we, need, we need to stay close together and encourage that in one another. We need to fan those flames in each other, saying this is the hour for a fuller manifestation of the word. God has been so good to us, friends, that he has, he has taught us over and over out of the message who we really are. Breaking spiritual news is showing us where we came from and what we're here for, what his purpose is and where we're going, showing who the bride is and where the mercy seat is and all of these wonderful truths that he's been giving to us, what age we truly live in and where we're supposed to be positioned in Christ. And he's done all of that and we've received all of those truths, but all of those truths are just to give us confidence in who we are so we can have confidence to live what he told us to live. So all of those things weren't to tantalize us and make us excited about doctrine. I mean, although we're quite excited about the doctrine, but all of those things were, were, were put together, were taught to us, were brought to us so that we would have a clear understanding of who we really are. So that in the hour of trouble, we're not gonna be shaken because we're on a firm foundation that I part of Christ. I come from God, I go to God, I will not be lost. He hasn't forgot about me. He, does it. he knows exactly where I am and exactly what condition I'm in and I'm at total rest with that. The headship has come to unite with the body. I'm in the invisible union with my Lord, my headship, and I don't have to be afraid or worry because he's going to take care of me. All of those moved, they were supposed to move from teachings and doctrines to life. And this is the hour we have to know who we are and what our purpose on this earth is and what he's commissioned us for. And now is the time for manifestation of all we've learned. Amen. I say praise be to God. Let us stay humble, loving, compassionate. We're bold in faith because we believe, but not arrogant, not harsh or critical. Bold in faith. And we can talk bold with one another as much as we want. But when you get out amongst the paranoid world who's scared, it's time to express compassion and concern and sympathy. Not that we don't tell the truth, but that inward spirit tells you when to speak and when not to speak. Amen. All he wants is me. Just a part He wants all of my heart All he wants Is all of me All he wants Is me Let's dance, we sing it in this last verse All I want again. Yes, all I want is you. No one else will do. Not just a
God bless you all. So good to be with you this evening. I'll say it. I said it on Sunday. I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. And we don't know how many more times we're going to have this opportunity, but while we have the opportunity, I'm happy to see you. Amen. And uh, I always uh, appreciate these. These are um, precious moments for us, and uh, we want to take every opportunity to keep doing this as long as we can. So if you don't mind, if you'll just take your Bibles, we will go right to the little thought. God's laid on my heart. I know it's here somewhere. There it is. If you could turn to Exodus uh, chapter 19. Exodus chapters 19. Starting at verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you up on eagles' wings, and I brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my commandment, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people." and for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And if you'll also turn to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, verses 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe the uh, Spirit of the Lord is just leading a certain way because I think everything that Brother Chad said, I either have that scripture or I have that quote. So we're just trusting the Lord. He knows how to encourage us in these things. And these uncertain times, I kept getting calls all day today from different individuals, either losing their jobs or um, financial problems. And it finally got to the point, I, I just said, I, there is no sure place to stand except for Christ. There is no other solid rock that I know of. There's nothing I can tell you. There's nothing I can say other than um, I would stand upon a revelation at this point in this hour. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you, Lord, honored and humbled, Lord, that by your grace we know that we are yours. Lord, we know that you hold the earth in the palm of your hand, Lord, your eye is on the sparrow. How much more are you watching over us, Father? Lord, we have such a confidence and a rest and an assurance, Lord, that you are in total control. And Father God, I just pray, Lord, that you would take this evening, Lord, I know that I'm insufficient and I'm unable, Lord, and I have no ability of my own. Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that you would take this consecrated time that's been set aside, Lord, to hear your word, and you would anoint me, Lord, to move me out of the way and just say those things that you once said. Lord, shut my lips to anything that wouldn't be right. Lord, anything that would maybe puff me up, don't allow it, Father, for there's only one worthy, Lord, amongst us, and that's you, Father. So, Lord God, I just pray, Lord, you take this time Lord, and you would just brew over your people, Lord. And Lord, that you would just bring glory unto yourself. As your word said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So Father, we're here to glorify you, to honor you, to respect you, and to love you. And to Lord, to look at your word and to believe it with all that is in us, Father God. Lord, we love you and we know that for this great hour and this time we've been called. So Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that you would move and speak to us and tell us what you want us to know. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so, a little bit of a, a tricky day for me to prepare. It really was, I'll be honest with you. So, it, it may be more just talking from my heart. Um, I just, um, I, I'm a little shocked, I'll be honest with you, at the amount of unprecedented changes that seem to be happening every, no longer a week uh, or day, but seemingly every hour. Um, but it just gives us such assurance that this world is falling apart and the only thing that will stand is God's word. Because he said, heavens and earth will pass away, but my word will never fail. And I believe God likes to show his great strength on behalf of his beloved bride. I just have a feeling that the mighty conqueror is still a mighty conqueror. I just have a feeling that inside of him is still this longing attribute to say, wait till I show my great strength to my wife to my bride who's been humbly taking me at my word for all these years, I'm going to show her how much I love her and how much I've got it all under control. So I am, I, I, will, I don't mean to say it arrogantly, I am excited. Uh, I am extremely excited to see what my God is going to do in an hour like this. He loves moments like this, when all odds seem to be getting stacked against uh, just before the devil could accomplish his cowardly goals, right? It's sure paving the way for some interesting things to be happening um, as we go. And I just wanted to share, you know, Brother Chad had mentioned there um, a picture I had sent him there last Sunday. And because uh, about three, um, three months ago, I had, um, had my computer crashed and like all things, you know, I'm looking for a screensaver. And um, I had had a conversation uh, a couple weeks even before that with Brother Jeremy. And I said, you know, Brother Jeremy, I says, it's not that I don't think there's more ground to take when it comes to the word, but why is there such a feeling inside of me that it's time to manifest the things that we've already taken a hold of? And, and it just, there was just a conversation, just a statement, right, Jeremy? It wasn't anything overly thought. It was just a statement. We were just talking. I think we both agreed. It just comes to a point in time. We love the word, like Brother Chad was saying, but these things are preparing for us for a life to be manifested. The seven seal expressed in a mom and in a dad and a mechanic and a farmer who looks like all hopes are lost, but they're just taking God at his word. And God is supernaturally supplying all of their needs according to his riches and glory. And there's nothing out of cater, and he's just waiting for the opportunity. And so I had, um, you know, I had preached a sermon. Well, uh, so I had, I had came across a picture and I wanted to put it on my computer like three months ago and, and um, I just was looking for an eagle picture and this is the, the picture. I've been asked a lot about this picture so I wanted to at least show it to you um, that I had put on my, my computer. Um, and it's, it's just simply an eagle taking flight but um, the course that it's taking is, is directly into the storm. It's not away from the storm, right? So it's an interesting situation that I hadn't even thought about and it, this picture never struck me, Brother Paul, until uh, Sister Naomi sang that song, um, A Time to Fly. And I was just liking the picture of the eagle, but I didn't realize that the, um, the direction the eagle was pointed um, was headed right into a storm. And, uh, but it's fitting. And it put me to tears after I listened to Sister Naomi's song. I, didn't, I kind of just got overly emotional because if you also look at this, um, it, it, I, had a, I have a little portion of a computer that does facial recognition. I know, strange, right? But, um, and if you'll notice in the top, it says, looking for you. So I said, oh. Could it be uh, the storm's looking for me? Yeah, I think so. Um, so we can get upset about what's going on, but I'll be honest with you, it's just birth pains. It's just the birth pains of a great bride that's coming forward, and it's the whole earth groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God, and God knows just exactly how to get out of her what he has placed into her. So it's, it comes a certain point in time, you don't get too upset about it. You know, for this purpose came I on this earth. I came here as an expressed attribute of his life, and I'm here to express it, and he's going to prove his word, and that proving of his word is in my life. And so this life has to be put to the test, and he's putting it to the test, each and every one of us, and I'm excited for what's going to come as a result of that. So in looking at that, I, I just wanted to take some time, like I said, just talking to you tonight. I just want to take some time at, um, of considering these storms that are surely coming and the, uh, the effects of the storm and the purpose of the storm for us as individuals. So I titled this little thought, Into the Storm, because um, here we go. It was, and it's, um, there's certain things happening. I don't exactly understand the full um, 
you know, you could get almost confused to saying, okay, the germs and the, all this stuff, and then you see the economic collapse. So one thing is for sure, this is greatly setting up some things that are, are, are going to be um, very drastic changes. Uh, you see the panic in the eyes of the people. My wife was getting milk at uh, Walmart the other day, and, you know, the, the, she said that the cashier lady stopped a woman. She had a whole grocery cart full of milk, and she said, you can't take a whole grocery cart full of milk. You're not allowed to have two, two gallons of milk. And, she said the woman looked at her and got angry at her and she says, get out of my way, woman. And um, she told Carrie, I said, 30 something years I've been here, I've never seen a person act like that. Yeah, so sh they have no sure place to stand. They, they, they're, they know it. They know that this is all that this world has to offer them. The only safety and security they can have is what they can provide in their own hands. And at the same time, they're trying to grab everything. We're trying our hardest to give up everything. They're trying to get a hold of as much as they can, and I'm doing everything I can to get rid of everything that I've uh, 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 gathered up over the last 36 years of my life. I've realized that everything I've been working so hard at was just the very things that was hindering my ability to take off flight where I was supposed to go from the beginning. And this is a new paradigm and a new reality for me that I'm getting more excited about because uh, we, we, we know this, that in this world, full independence is a sign of maturity, as Brother Aaron said, but, he, but in the spiritual realm of things, complete dependency, dependency upon God is the sign of true maturity. And that's where I believe that each and every one of us has to come to, and I believe these are the great opportunities God's giving us at this moment, to really let go and give it away. I'm not trying to see how much hand sanitizer I can stock up. I'm not trying to see how much toilet paper I can get or how much meat I can get in my freezer. Not at all at this point. I don't want anything. All I got and all I need was this. From the beginning, this is all we ever needed. And we tried to substitute this with so many other things along the way, and all it did was spiritually cripple the bride of Jesus Christ. And I don't say those things disrespectfully, but let's be honest, there was an immature bride on the scene, and it was a young bride that was coming to full maturity. And you know, and the prophet of God in his wisdom knew he was talking to a young bride. But you go listen to Countdown. And you'll see that he's speaking in such a way that he knows that a mature bride will come on the scene at a later date and time that'll be able to take those deeper things, that'll be able to understand and take it and not take offense to it, but say, praise God, that's where he wanted me from the beginning and that's where I'm going. So these things, when it comes to music and it comes to these things, this is just a maturing bride. That's no, that's no anger at a person. That's no anger at my brother or my sister. Hey, why don't you? No, hey, we're all guilty and we're all growing up. Let's grow up together. Let's take full possession of those things that we were called to, right? So it's just a maturing time. Just a maturing time, and I'm, a part, I, I, I'm proud to be maturing with all of you, right? So I appreciate how the word's been coming forward, and I appreciate the cutting off, cutting off, cutting off, right? It's, it, we know it. We're all guilty. We all have things and areas of our unbelief that we've been compromising in for far too long. Each and of, every one of us know those little areas, put a little too much confidence in our ability, too much confidence in our willpower, too much confidence in even our intellect or our knowledge of the message. And then none of it, you, you didn't really set your wings. You were supposed to be sons of God led by the Spirit of God in all things, in everything. Everything we do, we were supposed to be able to ride that wave of the Holy Ghost and just, have, just wherever it takes me, that's where I'll go. So maybe God is just giving that opportunity to us once more. I'm excited where that'll take yes. us, huh? Amen. So, if you'll turn to Mark, the book of Mark. And I did put a PowerPoint together because I, I do have some lengthy reading. I hope that's okay tonight. And I, I didn't want to just sit here and read. I know it's hard to hold your minds um, like that. So I, but I, I, so I put the PowerPoint so you can follow uh, the direction. Um, and we're going... In uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 37, it says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awakened him. And he said unto him, Master, carest, not, or carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And Brother Chad brought this out so perfectly. But, you know, just to lay the foundation here, what is he looking for when the storm comes on? He's looking for faith. And he says, when I come back, will I find it? 
Will I find faith when the storm comes on? You know, will I be saying what the word says? Or will I be tossed to and fro with the every wind and every wave that comes my way? Or will I have a steadfast assurance that I'm standing? And he's not just in the boat, he's in me. Amen. Right? For he said, greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. The boat may be going down, but I can't go down because he's in me. Amen. Right? And Brother Branham says in calling Jesus on the scene, he says, now Christ is in the church reconciling the people to God. He promised to do it as it, it has been written that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? Amen. Congregation says, Amen. 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 I believe it with all my heart, and he is just waiting to be called on the scene. Now, the only thing can call him on the scene is for us to awaken him in ourselves. Call him on the scene. So many times we're looking off for a minister to do something for us, or we're looking for God to come down with an angel and part the way for us, and, and all he's waiting for is say, hey, what did I put inside of you? You've got the word, speak and go forward, right? You see, he's setting up the opportunity for all those little amateur gods to really express what they were called for, right? So now here comes the lengthy readings. So let's just hang with me a little bit. What is cancer? What is disease? We'll deal on that for the next five minutes now. What is cancer? What caused that thing? Let's take a cancer, anything that you wish to take, tubercular, pneumonia, whatever you wish to, any disease. Diseases are germs. Let me pass something here quickly as our time is going. Listen, did you know the Bible predicts that in the last days there'll be germ warfare? That diseases will break out upon the people and they'll fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. But when the, with the angel who or who had charge over these plagues was given orders to touch none of them who, have the, uh, who the mark was, why, how much kind of teachers have we got to be, brethren, to get the church in order, get the church in order first, to be in that kind of a condition immune? You know, the government is spending billions and billions and billions of dollars trying to find the vaccine, and the little do they realize it's right here. There's certain things that science is not going to be able to solve that it's only a spiritual immunity against, and it's right here. If they only knew that there was a place of refuge, that there is a city of refuge, a new Jerusalem, a bride adorned for a groom upon the earth. My arms are sore now, Brother Bam says, from where doctors had punched needles into it and tried to inoculate me from yellow fever and so forth. I told them I didn't need it, but they wouldn't listen to me. But I'll tell you what God's going to do. God's got a serum, and it's called the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when that serum goes in, it inoculates you. Hallelujah. And in the last days, in these last days, but look, friend, the time is coming that when there is rising up a church, if we can't have faith for divine healing, how are you going to have faith for, or how are you going to have, how are you going to have for a rapture? You've got to move out, friend. We've got to get out of this old, slow church condition that we're in and step out, launch out, cut the shorelines and get out into somewhere where you lose all senses of fear and doubt. Out where there are all things possible, brother, just as free as it can be. You've got to sail, sail set towards heaven. Nothing can stir you, no way. You've got that way, that's all. Nothing can harm you. So maybe these are the opportunities that he wants us to set our sails right into. Now that's the kind of church it's going to be one of these days, according to the Bible, where the angel poured out his wrath and the diseases broke out and men even rotted in their flesh there where they were standing. And the fowl of the air came down and eat, the, eat off of the shoulders and the flesh of captains and great men and presidents and warriors and diplomats and potentates and everything. And the angel was given charge, don't you come near anyone that's got the seal of God in their forehead. It's going to be one of these days, divine healing's going to be a great thing among the people. So let's get in condition. God wants us. You say, well, Brother Branham, you say, let's, that's what God's waiting on. We're waiting on Jesus to return, and Jesus is waiting on us. You say, well, how, what can we do about it? The Bible said that the hour has come that the bride has made herself ready. Amen? 
This is the hour that she hath made herself ready, consecrating, separating. You know, the great thing about Jesus that really stuck out to me is he separated, he consecrated himself for others. He separated himself. He sanctified himself, he said, for others' sake. And that great hour where he could have chosen a path that would have made him more comfortable, he chose a harder way. But he chose a harder way for me and you. Now, will the bride walk in his footsteps? I believe, Brother Ben, she will. The sermon that we heard from Brother Ben, we know that the bride is walking in his footsteps because she's bone of his bone, life of his life. The same character and attributes of Jesus Christ expressed in the male is now being expressed in the female. So now is our great opportunity to sanctify and set ourselves apart. It shouldn't have to be that we have to get pushed and prodded. We should say, thank you, Lord. I appreciate this nether opportunity to draw closer unto you and to kill myself for others' sake because there's others that are going to be watching you like you've never thought before. Everybody's going to be watching you. They're going to watch your reaction. They're going to watch your word. They're going to watch your emotions. They're going to see what happens with you under the squeeze. God's setting it all up. He knows how to bring attention to his bride and the thing he wants the whole world to take notice of. He's setting it all up. Brother Banham also says in 1960, God's provided a way. How we thank thee that in this great hour that when all hopes of mortal life is finished, atomic bombs are laying and hangers and hydrogen bombs and sickness and disease and germ warfare. Oh God, and everything the way it is, knowing that the Bible said that a man would actually rot in their flesh and the angel was given commission, don't you touch any of those. Don't you come near those who has the wine and the oil. Don't touch those who has the seal of God upon their forehead. Do we have anything to be afraid of? No, we've already taken the vaccine. We've already been inoculated. Let's just keep going. 1963, accepting God's provided way at the end time. Now, some of them said, well, now, if the plagues fall, we'll just go in a hospital. If the plague, now, if the plague happens to fall, you know what we'll do? We'll go get Dr. Jones. We'll know, he'll know how to take care of it. It didn't work, yet they were smart. Well, if the plagues fall, we'll just go down beneath the ground in a cave. We'll shut the door. Uh, that, that won't do it one bit of good. We'll stay home. We'll put a mask over our face. We'll put in some disinfectant on it. Didn't do a bit of good. God made a provided way, yes. And it was what? The blood. God provided it as simple as it seemed to take the blood of the lamb and sprinkle the door, yet God said that that was his way and he honored it. All out from under the blood died the firstborn. Now, I'm not drawing any conclusions, but I'm going to make a little statement, and I may be going out on a limb. I can be corrected, and I totally could be wrong. But it was a firstborn. Now, we all know that something's striking a certain age generation that are more susceptible at this moment. Very clear. 70 to 80 years old, most susceptible. Prophet of God was on the scene. The word came forward, and the first to reject it. I may be going on a limb, but I'll at least just, it's interesting. It may not be true. It's just interesting. But they died <clears throat> who rejected the simplicity of a prophet and his message in their day. And they rejected the pathway to the blood, which was by the word, in its simplicity. And they, made, they said it's foolishness. It's nonsense. We have our churches. We have our doctrines. We have our creeds. We don't need what that fanatic is saying. And they're going to call us fanatics for saying these things. But that's okay. I'm in good company. Christ comes, 1954. Christ comes three times. The first time he came to redeem his church, is that right? The second time he comes to receive his church. And the third time comes with his church. He comes to redeem her. He comes to rapture her and be caught away in the time of the plagues and so forth. Returns back to the millennium and lives through the millennium. Wow, now I'm getting more excited. Amen. Time just keeps moving on. So we've got nothing to fear. Now let's go to Psalms 27. I, I don't mean to be moving, but we just have a lot to read and a lot to go through. And I just want to bring one little portion of this. Obviously, I have it highlighted, but I think it'd be good for us to read this. 
Brother Branham preaches the rapture, quotes Psalms 27. The Psalm of David, the Lord is the light of is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. So you want to know the greatest witness in this time? Be happy. Amen. Smile. Yeah? Don't let nothing put a frown on your face. Conduct yourself with joy in the midst of the trial, Brother Bannum said. And now shall my head be lifted up on my enemies, and my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Boy, there's another one. Next time you're in Walmart, you know what to do? Start singing with a big old smile on your face. There you go. You're going to stand out like a sore thumb. And it'll set quite a testimony in a place of panic like that. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice and have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou settest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me and put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Now, I just want to hone in on that. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And I had always read that many times, and I got to think, well, maybe my mom reject me, my dad reject me, my family would reject me. And that could be, that could be part of it. And I don't doubt that many of us have all went through that in some form or fashion. But just want to think about this for a moment. Um, but the, uh, the, the Hebrew word here for forsake is as Azab, to leave or to loose or to forsake or to depart from or to leave behind, to let alone, to leave, abandon, forsake, neglect, to let loose of, to set free, let go, to free. And I want to look at Ephesians 5. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak to you concerning Christ and the church. So I know this may sound a little strange, but you know, let's just take me for a moment. For many, many years of my life, I had a, a name of a Kyle Weikert. I had a reputation and I had an identity that I found in my dad and, and our family. And as time grew on, I, I uh, went to school and I, I got strong and I, I played sports and I had a lot of confidence in the physical body that I had and in the intellectual mind that I had. And, had an ability to maybe navigate through work life and do certain things and had confidence in my reasoning abilities and my, um, you would say, ability to interact with people. I had a lot of confidence in the things that always provided for me for my whole life. You know, a man's strength provides for him. A man's intellect provides a way for him, gives him a certain identity. But in just thinking of that, as a child, as just a little girl, you would say she's completely identified in her home with her mother and her father, and that's all she knows. But as that little girl comes to full maturity, she one day leaves everything that once provided for her, protected her, gave her her identity, and she's handed off to fully embrace another man. And I just wonder a little bit for me and for each of us, for how long have we been finding our security and our confidence and our strength and our human reasoning and our human ability, willpower, strength, family name, family tradition, strong heritage. But there comes a point in time, I got to leave it all to unite with Christ. There comes a point in time where nothing else can go in there, just me and him. My intellect can't go. My reasoning can't go. 
My emotions can't go. It's just me, faith, taking hold of him, the word. That's it. So maybe it's not a bad thing when all these things start to fail and my mother and my father forsake me because maybe that's finally for the first time in my life that the Lord will truly take me up. Remember my uh, sermon there on Enoch's journey home. You know, he just was walking with the Lord and slowly everything was falling away until one day he walked with God so long that God took him. Just gathered him right up into myself. He had fully, maybe finally, fully believed and embraced that word. But step by step, revelation by revelation, one step at a time, word by word, he was building. He was building, coming higher, coming higher, coming higher, until he could finally take flight. I don't think it's going to be too far off for that for us. Just one step at a time. So finally saying, you know, Lord, I can't figure this out anymore. Lord, I really don't have an ability to navigate this situation. I, I really don't know what to do. And then he can finally say, finally, why don't you come with me? And I think that's what we're going through. And I think that's what God's preparing us for, a truly forsaking of all things and just taking God at his word at this point. So another little lengthy reading. Um, Brother Branham says, an eagle in her nest, and you know, there may be many, a little eagle, been walking in some old denominational chicken yard for a long time, sitting here tonight. That's right. But I hope that he calls you and says, son, you're mine. What must I do, Lord? That was the cry. She said, just make first big jump and flop your wings. And he made the first jump and flopped his wings. And he found out he wasn't earthbound anymore because he sat on a barnyard post right in the center of a Pentecostal organization. His mother said, son, you've got to come higher than that, or you can't, or I can't get you. Said, just give another jump, and I'll bear you up on my wings. You see, so it's a good thing to forsake all. It's a good thing to abandon and be forsaken by mother and by father and everything that once gave us strength and hope and protection because that one next jump throws us right into his arms. And that's where we're going by faith. If there's anything the church of the living God needs tonight, it's another jump from all the barriers of denomination, from all the isms. Just cut loose every life, every line, go free and jump. He will bear you away on the wings of the great speckled bird. It's such meetings as this. It's such times as this. It's such an audience as this where he can make, a, make that great jump to feel his power. Reach under, reach under us with his word and bear us away from the little earthly cares and things that we have. He's your father and he loves you. The nest during time has already come, but we need another jump. We got to the barnyard post, but we need to get free so we can just ride on his wings for our first solo flight. What a joy it will be when that great final day comes. And those that know how to jump and flop their wings, those who know how to do it, someday he'll come. That great eagle of the sky shall come in glory, and he'll spread forth his great power, the Holy Spirit. And those who are magnetized to it shall take a ride for eternity forever. Amen. You see why I'm saying what I said? Let's take one more jump. We did jump. We know we're not earthbound, but we got to take one more jump. And that's a reckless abandonment to take God at his word. An absolute reckless abandonment. You almost literally have, no, I'm not saying almost, you must lose your mind. You absolutely have to lose your mind. And I promise you, it's scriptural. Shamgar, one day, lost his mind. Absolutely lost his mind. And I'd shared with the kids a while back ago, you know what the bride of Jesus Christ needs? She needs 600 Philistines marching towards her right now to take everything that she's got. Because finally, she'll put no more confidence in herself 
one last time and take God at his word. As Brother Branham said, here he heard something coming up the road. Here come a thousand Philistines, armed spears, swords hanging on their sides, trained men, tronk, tronk. Right up the road they came and little Shamgar stood there. What could he do? He was a farmer. He wasn't a soldier. He didn't have nothing to fight with. He looked, sitting in the corner, there was an ox goat. That's just an interesting thing. He has not a training. He's no training. He's got nothing to fight with. The only thing he has is the only thing that can deliver him, faith in the Word of God. That's it. At the end of the day, there will be nothing else that can stand. It's going to be so simple. It's going to be so humble that most of the world will reject it. It's too simple. You mean just simple, humble faith, little hyssop taking the blood? and applying the blood upon the doorpost of my life, this simple faith. I don't need to be able to jump through mental hoops with you. No, just simply taking him at his word, and he'll do the rest. So losing your mind is not a new thing. You don't think David lost his mind? David lost his mind. David, why are you, a, you, you, you take on a lion? That's no common sense. Maybe we should actually put a little bit of common sense to this, right? You know, let's be honest. This, this thing is pretty bad. This virus is pretty bad. And we need to be balanced in our approach in these things. We need to use some common sense. Show me where common sense is anywhere in the Bible. There's no common sense in the Bible. David had no, you would say, common earthly sense. What common sense says, I'm going after that lion? What common sense says that bear, I'm taking you out? What well, common sense of a little boy where an entire army of trained men are too afraid tackles an 11-foot Goliath? What's the, where's the common sense in this? Where's the common sense of Shamgar? Where's the common sense? Where's the balanced approach? Nonsense with the balanced approach. All that was was human reasoning still mixed with the Word of God that was producing death all along, and it crippled the little bride. But I am thankful to God that we have been forsaken by mother and father and we're leaving those things and taking our God-given position by faith in the word and we're losing our minds and taking on a Goliath. Who are you uncircumcised Philistine to defy the armies of the living God? Who are you? You're going to each and every one have that opportunity to take your stand. So simple and so humble. But we're going to get that opportunity. Brother Bam says, oh, yes, he permits crosses and crossroads and junctions. He always does that. In order to perfect us for his service, he permits those things to happen. Can't you understand that, congregation? Amen. He does that so he can perfect you for the calling he has called you for. That's your growing pains. He did Daniel that way, you know. He did the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. What did the fiery furnace do? The fiery furnace only broke the bands that had them bound. That's all the furnace did, just burnt loose the bands. Sometimes it takes trials to break the bands of the world off of us. Take you out of the world, might be, have to take you out of your creed first. Like the man drowning in the river, you have to take him out of the river before you can get the river out of the man. So I think the fiery trials and storm are the very thing the bride needs to finally let loose. To, to, to really throw off everything because do you know what to do? Anybody tell me what they should do in the next 30 days. Tell me how to plan. Tell me how, what, what should any of us do to get ready for this? And nobody has an answer. The entire federal government doesn't have an answer. The Federal Reserve doesn't have an answer. The doctors don't have an answer. The whole world doesn't have an answer. What a blessed place we are in. Man, because I have the answer. I know the answer. He's my father. <laughs> I know him personally. All I have to do now is a complete reckless abandonment and saying, God, finally, I'm not going to put any confidence in planning into this anymore. Lord, you're going to take me just where you want me to go. And I'm going to express that great purpose that I was on this earth for him from the beginning. So let's not get upset. This is the greatest blessing that's ever come towards us. Show us thy father and it will suffice. Um, okay, so now, so I wanted to go to this. It's a little story, and you all know the story, so I'll, I'll just read a portion of it. Brother Branham talks about he's in the woods there, and I began to hear something. I looked over to my side, and there sat a little old pine squirrel. I don't know whether you have them here or not. That's the noisiest thing in the woods. There it was, setting up there with a little tail thrown up, just going chatter, 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 like he was going to tear 
me to pieces. I thought, did I excite you, little fella? I didn't aim to, but I said, oh, you're like I did, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, how wonderful. And he kept chatter, chatter, chatter. His cotton blue eyes looked down like that, and I thought, you're not watching me. And all at once, I noticed a great big old eagle that had been forced down in a storm under this blowdown. And this story just come back to my mind, you know, because here we are talking about eagles. Here we are talking about eagles going right into the storm. And here we have a story of an eagle that got blown down. Maybe he didn't tackle that storm quite like he was supposed to. And sometimes that can happen to you, and it has certainly happened to me. We look back in life circumstances. I look back at situations and trials that came my way, and you know what? They blew me down. They put me hiding behind in a, in a dark place, you know, just I didn't, I didn't take it right. I didn't handle it right. And it comes to each and every one of us. Sometimes the storms of life just cripple us, spiritually cripple you. And maybe sometimes you may even feel like that. That's why I even put this in. It's like I just feel like maybe sometimes you may be looking at the trials ahead. You're looking at the storms come. You know what you're called to do. And you remember that last time you didn't pass the test. You ran. You went and hid. You didn't even tackle it. You gave up. And I've been there. And I think each and every one of us has been there. And I don't think you can live long enough and walk with the Lord long enough where there's times you can look back in your life where you hang your head and say, Lord, I know I let you down right there. I have. Amen. But <clears throat> I'm not looking back at that as an excuse to not tackle the storm ahead. Amen. I'm looking back at that and it's driving me to take on that storm because I'm saying it's going to be different this time. Amen. There's something on the inside of me and it's saying, not this time. Amen. You might have got me there. You might have discouraged me and put me in a corner and I really messed up and I really got down, but not, not no more. You see, because Brother Bannon begins to say, uh, and he, let me jump to this one. So after a while, he got tired of looking at that little old pine squirrel listening to him. And so he just made one big jump. And if you remember the little pine squirrel saying, days of miracles over. Jesus Christ ain't the same yesterday, today and forever. See, just a chatter, chatter, chatter. What was he trying to do? Trying to get you to disbelieve. Don't take God at his word. But you just, even though that eagle got blowed down, there was just something in that eagle that could only take such unbelief for so long. He finally got sick and tired of all the chatter, chatter, chatter. We can't take God at his word. You're getting too extreme. You're losing your mind. You need to stay balanced. Mm-hmm. And the ego just finally had enough of it at one point. So he just made one big jump, flopped his wings a couple times, and he was out of the bushes, out into the midair. Then I cried, and he never flopped anymore. He never tried to flop his wings to get away. He just set his wings. And every time that air would come in, he just knowed how to set his wings out into that air, just lift him up. I watched him. The air came in and lifted him up lifted him up until he went plumb out of sight, leaving that little old pine squirrel sitting there cursing and going on his way. I thought, that's it, Lord. Not a jump, jump here, run, run there, join Methodist, join Baptist, come back, be baptized this way, this way. It's, it's just setting your wings of faith in a humble of the Holy Ghost comes in, ra- rise from it, on and on and on, plumb out of sight leaving this old earthbound doctrine here. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Days of miracles past. Chatter, chatter, chatter. Don't get the Holy Ghost. Leave it. Soar away. Go on. Set your wings right away. God sends the winds to ride up on it. So let everybody do their arguing, their fussing, their, uh, you know, it's a shame, but it's true. That's what constantly happens. A man of insecurity has to put down another man so he can feel like he's adequate. And at this point, I says, God bless you all. I'm just waiting for the wind to come. I'm setting my wings. I'm getting them ready. I'm tired of all the chatter, 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 and the days of miracle, and you're the, you can't do that, and you can't do that. Nah, that's okay. There's just something inside of me that says, I still got some God-given wings here. I'm going to take my flight. I'm just going to take my flight. I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm not chattering, chattering back. Let the squirrels do what they must. They must be there. And you know what I think the squirrel's purpose is? To annoy the eagles. They're just there to put that final poke in them. They're like, I'm tired of this. 
I'm out of here. Not fussing, not arguing, just gone. <laughs> just saying, enjoy earthbound conditions. I'm going higher. Amen. Read between the lines. The difference, shalom, the difference is just like it was in the beginning when there was gross darkness upon the earth and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water and said, let there be light. And God separated the light from the darkness. And I believe that we are now living in the hour again, that when God is separating light from darkness and he's pressing it to the other side of the world, that the light may be made manifest. And we are. Then the church, the reason I'd say shalom to them is because that it's God's peace. That's what I want to bring to you this morning for this New Year's. Not looking back, but we're looking forward to the breaking of a new day. Until there is something great lying ahead of us, where the years has been the joy that we've looked forward to, the pressing coming of the great light, and now we can see it breaking over the horizon, the horizontal rain. It's breaking between mortal and immortality. We see it breaking between heavens and earth, from earthbound sickness and troubled world into the bright and shining day of an immortal life and an immortal body and an immortal earth that shall never pass away. It's shalom to the church. Now it's light time coming for the believers, but gross darkness for the people. Good morning. Shalom. And the world is falling apart. Shalom. Peace. They are truly in gross darkness and they have no, no hope. But shalom. Arise and shine. Thy light has come. And so this was the other screensaver that I put on my computer about three months ago. The first one was when you open it, it has to identify you, and that's the eagle that's taking on the storm. But that eagle doesn't stay in the storm forever. He just knows that that storm is necessary to lift him up into the heavenly realms where his heavenly Father is. And that's exactly what each and every one of us know. And I don't mean to talk so simple, but you know it's the truth. Deep down on the inside of you, you know that that is right. That it's just the simplicity of taking God at his word in moments like this where every storm is coming your way that's actually going to be the very thermal dynamics needed for the eagle to throw her up into the heavenly realms from which she came. And that's where we're going. As Mark 16 said, and he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature in good times and in bad. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They'll speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. This is my promise. As the story goes, what Brother Bam said about the woman, if God could heal me with that which is uninspired, what will he do with that which really is inspired? So you see, don't back down, keep going. You have a hope that lies within you. Little did you know what God's placed on the inside. Now is just the time and the opportunity for the full expression of those little secrets that God had in the back part of his mind now being expressed in the time in which you're living. Yeah, each and every one of us. Musicians, if you'll come. I, I told you I wouldn't, well, I don't think I told you I wouldn't be long. I told you I was going to talk to you. I want to close with this. The cloudy skies and the storms of life are no signs of God's disapproval. So it could get dark, but don't think of it God's disapproving of things. Neither are bright skies and still water signs of his love and approval. His approval of any of us is only in the beloved. His love is elective, which we, he had for us before the foundation of the world. Does he love us? Ah, yes. But how shall we know? How shall we know because he said so and manifested that he did love us for he brought us to himself and gave us his spirit, placing us as sons. And how shall I prove my love to him? By believing what he said. My, that little eagle might have got discouraged, blown down by a big storm, but there was still something inside him that believed what God said. 
You got something inside of you? Still says, I just believe what God said. So what do we do? Believe what he said, and by conducting myself with joy in the midst of the trials that he in his wisdom allows to come to pass. So smile and sing the next time you're going through Walmart. It's going to please your Lord. Be happy. Lose your job, smile. No more money, smile. No more food, smile. Just be happy. God knows what he's doing. He may send ravens to feed you. It's going to get really exciting. I know each and every one of you want to come up on some Sunday morning and says, everybody got testimony. I ran out of food this week and a bunch of ravens flew in, brought me a steak dinner, baked potato and green beans. I'm waiting for it. It's okay. It'll be a good time when it happens, right? So why don't you all stand with me? I hope that's okay. Yeah. I trust the Lord and his leadership. Let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you this evening, Lord, always so thankful. Your word is our comfort. Your word, Lord, gives us joy in the midst of great trials. Lord, it, it's just, it's the very thing that we stand upon. It's the very thing that's the anchor of our life, and we love it. And Lord, we just love you, and we are, want to thank, tell you how much we, we believe you. We trust you. We know you're in complete control. No matter how dark it gets, Lord, we believe you. Lord, we just know that there's something on the inside of us. That's your grace. That's the love that you gave to us that still believes your word. Lord, we know we're being conformed day by day into your image. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you'd bless your people. Lord, may they go forth with joy in their hearts because no matter what, this is going to get better for each and every one of us. Maybe the mother and father forsake us. Maybe there'll be nothing else that we once put our hopes in we could rest on. But Lord, may we each and every one of us realize all that was were bands and chains keeping us earthbound, stuck in an earthbound condition. Finally, those fiery flames of the trial are going to burn those bands off and set your eagle to flight. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this fellowship. I personally, Lord, appreciate each and every one. I appreciate every face, every mom and dad and child and young person faithfully standing on the word. It's an encouragement to me. And Lord, I, I just love the family of God. I love the people. And uh, I just appreciate it. <clears throat> and uh, just pray, Lord, that you'll bring us back together at a time you see fit, Lord, in your purpose and in your plan. And Lord, go with us wherever we go. Lord, may the joy of the Lord be my strength. May it shine upon my countenance, Lord. People will recognize he's in contact with something, and I got to know what that is. Lord, from my depths of my heart, I know friends and family and people that I still want to reach. And Lord, maybe it was just too comfortable. The world was just too comfortable for them to really even have a need or recognize the need that they had. I just pray, Lord, that each and every one of us will be at the scene at the right time, Lord, expressing the right word to the right person, Lord, just as you've ordained it in your great symphony, Lord. We want to be there to play our part in the symphony when it comes our turn. We love you, Lord. We commit ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Brother Chad, if maybe we'll sing um, Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. I don't know how to start it, though. Uh, if I have words, I will. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> My hope is filled on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but hope.
I was greatly edified by the word tonight, were you? And greatly encouraged. More than anything, friends, we need to never forget the ABCs. We need to never forget the application of the word in our lives, that it's got to live, that everything we've been taught has to live. And, you know, I was thinking there at the end when Brother Kyle was talking, Brother Bam talked about that great sculpture he's been working on in the masterpiece, you know. We know he started with the male part of the masterpiece, but the masterpiece is a masterpiece family, husband and wife together. And he's been through seven church ages working on the female part of that masterpiece. And in the studio, time alone with the master's hand has been so beautiful. He's just talking to you and telling you, I'm taking this away and I'm fashioning you this way. And we've had all this time in the studio. But Brother Branham says before that piece of work can go to the Hall of Fame, first it has to pass through the Hall of Critics. And if it was up to us, we would stay in the studio forever. But God's going to eventually take his masterpiece and put it on display. And it'll pass the test of every critic. And he'll move it into the Hall of Fame. You know, that's the part we've been trying to avoid. Do you believe that? That's the part we've been trying to avoid. We've enjoyed the studio with just us and him. We're going to enjoy the, you know, the Hall of Fame restored to an Eden condition. But to get from there to there, we must be on display and pass through the Hall of Critics. And we would have avoided it. We would have never chosen it. Amen. We would have just stayed where we were. But God is moving the circumstances because this is going to be again the unveiling of Christ in bride form. And it's going to pass through the Hall of Critics. But don't be discouraged. It's going to the Hall of Fame. God is working circumstances that we would have never worked. God is doing things that we would have never voluntarily done. We were too comfortable. But thank God he loves us. And he will do everything he said he's going to do. And he will bring to pass everything he said he's going to bring to pass because his word won't fail. So I thank God. I thank him for what he's doing. Jesus, for the glory that lay ahead, endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus come to a place where he had to go through the cross, through the hall of critics, to be crucified. And in order to do that, he had to set his eyes higher, beyond the temporary into the eternal. And for the glory that lay ahead, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Remember, this wasn't something he was looking forward to. He prayed three times that this cup could pass him. As a human, as a man, there was a dread, there was an agony, there was an angst in his heart coming into this time, amen? But he surrendered his will to the will of the Father and moved forward before the glory that lay ahead. I tell you, maybe it's time for us to quit thinking about the earth, the carnal things, and let's start setting our eyes on what's coming next and walk forward with our vision set forward, not on the temporal, but on the eternal. Oh, I was encouraged tonight. If we find ourselves with a little more time off, let's have some more fellowship. Amen. Let's not waste what's, what's, what's coming our way. If God is stripping away some things and we find ourselves working from home or not working or whatever happens, you know, the, the kids are already not in school. And so if we find ourselves with more time, let's have more fellowship. Let's spend more time in the word. Let's do the things we know are going to really count in this hour that we're alive. Let's not waste it and squander it on things that matter for nothing. But let's start taking our time and putting it to things that matter the most. Amen. God bless you guys. Amen. Can you sing that song, This World is Falling Apart? But thank God I've got Jesus in my heart. This world's falling apart. But praise God. I've got a secret. Amen. Amen. There's a secret. To the world, it's a mystery. To me, it's a secret. Amen. And that secret's what has me moving forward. But Tommy, you know. While living below, everywhere that I go, this world of trouble and pain, there's murder and crime, this is the end time. Okay.
gets so dark and it all falls apart I'm glad Jesus lived down in my heart They're praying for peace For a hostage release While holding a gun in their hand There's moral decay A great falling away In the shape this world's in it won't stand But let it crumble and fall I'm not bothered at all When the world of the rock I live high When the world comes undone I'm trusting in one Who gives me great peace down inside Oh, this world is falling apart I'm so glad Jesus lived down in my heart I'm carried away so dark and it all falls apart I'm glad Jesus lives down in my heart Sing that more Amen. Amen I'll never remember the words unless it's anointing of the Holy Ghost Praise be to God Amen There's a joy in the midst of trouble It doesn't take away our compassion and concern for others It doesn't take away our expression of love But we can't help it There's a joy on the inside we don't want it to go away. Praise God. Amen. If we could sing that song, The Winds of Faith. The Winds of Faith. Amen. I think we had a good message. We need to take advantage of the wind that's blowing. This isn't the time to get blown down, but this is the time to get blown up. Contrary winds are blowing. There's no question. But let's just let the wind move us into position. God's trying to accomplish something. There's something he's wanting to do. He's moving his kingdom work along. Amen. Let's get in the rhythm of what he's doing. and Let the wind put us where we're supposed to be. Let us sing this song. You can be dismissed as you'd like to be tonight. You're welcome to stay and sing and worship longer. Let's sing this together, Brother Tom. There are two roads you may take, one by side, one by faith. Take the word of God, or what you see, what you believe, is what will be. Set your wings to the winds of faith. You can fly in a higher place. Do not struggle. It's by grace. Set your wings to the winds of faith. Watch your knees. Watch your cry, watch your mountain, is it much too high? Just speak the word of God, and by and by, it will move, or you will fly. Set your wings to the winds of faith. In a higher place Do not struggle It's by grace Set your wings To the winds of faith Now watch the eagle In the sky He does not struggle does not strive for the power that makes him rise.
dear panted for the water so my soul longed after thee for you alone are my heart's desire
make about his love Just think about his goodness Think about his grace That's brought us Let's think about